Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Wednesday, August the 29th, 2018, as we roll right along here and uh, we are uh, still under this really oppressive, oppressive air mass here uh, in uh, my neck of the woods. Uh, we uh, show, pointed out yesterday, and I, I actually went and, and uh, dug around, I have a post up on my website right now. Uh, meteorologist Joe that addresses this uh, the uh, days where dew points the number of hours this summer where the dew points have been above 70 in uh, my neck of the woods in the Northeast have been at the highest levels uh, in the last 50 years you, know, you go back and look at some of these reporting stations uh, like Islip LaGuardia and a few others and you go back as, uh, to about 1971, and it's the humidity levels of dew points above 70, okay, when it's really oppressive. And if you combine that with temperatures in the mid-90s, you're getting some ridiculous heat indices uh, that are resulting in the 105, 110 range. I mean, it's just absolutely been appalling up here. And we are finally getting to a point where we are going to see a break, um, which is uh, good news. Now, I just want to quickly say hi to Johnny Quest is the first one on board tonight. Uh, Jake was second. Tyler Nepp was third. And uh, Delvin rounds out the uh, Superfecta. And uh, Smokin' Shooter Packs uh, rounds out the, uh, the the Super High Five uh, for, for the day. For you uh, horse racing aficionados, you will totally understand uh, what I was getting at. Okay, let's go first things first. I'm going to go talk about the tropics first because they, we continue to see signs on weather models that uh, things on the Atlantic Basin are about to uh, get uh, a bit more active. And we're going to start off. Uh, this is from tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, and uh, thank you, Levi Cowan, uh, for uh, letting us uh, share this uh, with uh, our audience. We have here the uh, Eastern Satellite Loop. Uh, which uh, is uh, off the African coast. Now there's a lead wave that is well is out to the west and west of the Cabo Verde Islands, and that's kind of moving right along here. Uh, but we do see a, a strong tropical wave that is approaching the uh, coastline here, and will be moving offshore. And weather models, all of the uh, global models, uh, seem to uh, really get this thing going. I'm going to go to the uh, long wave enhanced view just the, the flashing frames just um, uh, loading in here and there's some pretty hefty convection here that is coming off this is probably the best looking wave that we've seen from the standpoint of satellite presentation uh, the uh, entire summer season and, and it is, once it gets off the uh, African coast uh, the models uh, get this going fairly quickly the Hurricane Center has actually raised their probability of development up to 60% uh, over the next five days. And it looks like we have another strong wave behind this one, uh, which some models grow bullish on. So uh, we uh, are looking at the idea that we're going to see uh, an increase in tropical activity. Uh, just a, a revisit here from the GFS. I showed this a few days ago. Um, <clears throat> this is the, uh, you see the surface features uh, the brown shading is telling us the um, <coughs> relative humidity, uh, roughly from about 10,000 feet to about 20,000 feet. Where you see all the brown is dry air, and then that sort of aquamarine blue-green is what where you uh, see um, moisture, higher relative humidities in the 85-90% range. Uh, in the in the darkest of those uh, of those greens, and in the browns, you're talking about relative humidity humidities down at uh, 20, 15, and 10%. Uh, going into the end of this week, uh, the dry air was fairly extensive across much of the Atlantic. I'm just going to back it up to Sunday, and you can see that, you know, you've got these strands of moisture with old frontal boundaries, but as far as the trop subtropical Atlantic, and even going into the tropical Atlantic, the air was fairly dry, and you just had this sort of anemic area of, uh, of higher relative humidities. Well, that is changing. Uh, as we go into next week, you start to see the drier air retreat somewhat, and you have a very well-contained uh, uh, area of moisture. In fact, the new GFS, which rolls this wave that's moving off now, 
Uh, actually, uh, now, whether it's organized enough remains to be seen, but it's got a 95 low with a few wrapped up isobars around it here by uh, to my uh, f early Friday morning. I mean, if this is right, this could well be a tropical storm as it, go, as it passes by south of the Cabo Verde Islands. It's a little tricky out there because sometimes what will happen is that you'll have these sort of, this sort of broad uh, low pressure center that develops and you have to wait for them to get west of the, the uh, Cabo Verde Islands for, the, for an area of tight convection to form near the circulation center. Uh, but the GFS seems to be rather aggressive here uh, out for, through um, 108 hours at least uh, where we uh, wind up at this point. This is now at 6Z Monday. If this is right, it's got a hurricane already at this point at about 17 uh, and, and about 17 north, 17 and a half north and about 37 west. I will tell you that um, judging from what I'm seeing with respect to the upper air, there is going to be a weakness that develops uh, up to the north. You do have the upper high that's sitting off the Atlantic coast that extends east to about 55 or so, 55 degrees west. But you do have a weakness there, and it, it seems, uh, at least when we looked at this from the standpoint of the prior model runs, that um, we uh, see this system, if it develops, responding to this weakness and it goes uh, up at uh, around 50 degrees or so west and actually some models want to turn this a little bit further to the east uh, more like it before it even gets to 45 west but uh, the GFS wants to take get it as far west as 50 degrees before it lifts up and then moves out and the next thing you know uh, it's sitting up at Iceland the uh, European uh, model uh, has a um, similar idea uh, the westerlies, if you look across the uh, Atlantic, uh, it, 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 uh, you got that weakness trough that extends uh, off the coast of uh, Spain and Portugal, uh, extends down uh, to the Canary Islands. Uh, there's a little bit of ridging that's up near the Azores and pushing northeastward from there. Uh, then you have the strong ridge that's off the Atlantic coast. So there's kind of a bit of a no man's land here. And if you look at the the line that's marked 588, that is the southern edge of the westerlies that actually get pretty far south there at 35 degrees north. The question is whether there's going to be an opening. And, you know, judging from the European, it seems as if there will be an opening for this to turn northward uh, before it even makes it uh, to 50 degrees west. At least that's the plan at the moment. The other question at hand is the Europeans' insistence that there will be something that will try and develop uh, in the uh, near Florida or the Gulf of Mexico early next week. And, and the models have been kind of moving this around. Uh, it's there, it's not there. The European has been rather consistent with it. Uh, the first thing I want to point out, though, is when we look at the upper air structure, uh, late in the weekend and into early next week with this upper high that is forecast to build along the east coast from North Carolina northward, the ridge rebuilding there, uh, it will create a condition where pressures across the Gulf of Mexico back through Florida will probably be lower than normal. And that could, uh, and I want to emphasize could, uh, given whatever other conditions are going on, um, uh, cre cause something to spin up. Uh, you can barely find it here on today's 120 hour other than there's a kink in the isobar. And unlike prior runs, which got rather bullish with a developing low, today's European has really backed off. The GFS seems to be um, about two runs ahead of the game as far as the, the European is. The GFS uh, has become, actually went less bullish with this idea uh, yesterday, the European seems to be playing catch up. It still shows a definable feature going into Louisiana and Texas, but keeps it relatively weak. We're going to monitor this. Uh, the, the, these kind of systems are coming in into play uh, can surprise. Uh, a lot's going to depend, of course, obviously on the uh, upper air con the conditions of the upper atmosphere with regards to um, you know shear or no shear. Um, I'll give it a quick. Uh, going to see if I can get. Um, a map here that at least shows see what we got 
I mean, there is some we some kind of upper low. Uh, this is at 200 millibars, so I'm looking way up here, trying to get a, a, a sense for you know wind, wind conditions in the Gulf of Mexico. I mean, going out at least to a, a early Tuesday, you know, we do have you know there's a bit of an upper low here, and there is some wind shear across the Bahamas, and then also back. Uh, into um, uh, parts of the, the uh, central Gulf Coast. I'm trying to see whether, whether we could wind up with something out of here or not. And looking at the new 126 hour, I mean, you know, you can barely find a kink in the isobar here with regards to a developing surface low. So, you know, right now the GFS is kind of arguing against it. Uh, it does enhance tropical moisture, uh, you know, it does enhance the moisture field. It does attempt to at least develop some showers and storms, but at least uh, into uh, Monday, uh, Monday night, it doesn't seem to be developing into any kind of a surface low. We'll check back with this uh, a little bit later on when we get a few more frames to see what happens. But here's the situation in the east is we've got this cold front that is up uh, in through uh, western New York and through uh, northwest Pennsylvania, northeast Ohio. Uh, we are getting some... Uh, hefty showers and storms tonight on the radar uh, across uh, northeast Ohio. Uh, I want to check to see if any of these are severe. This is where the Storm Prediction Center did have some risk going on. Uh, the, the Pittsburgh radar showing a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings going up here. That This is as of 6.11 Eastern Time. As always, if you're watching this on a replay later tonight, uh, remember that these radars are dated, so you want to check your local radars from your local National Weather Service office to see if there are any watches and warnings up. And you can do that by going to weather.gov. Just find your geography there on the map and click on it, and you'll pull up your local National Weather Service office. Uh, but the Pittsburgh radar, fairly busy uh, with some, uh, show uh, some showers and some heavier thunderstorms. A couple of them seem to be severe. Uh, I'm, I'm just jumping down to the Charleston, West Virginia radar uh, and there are some scattered cells there. Let's go uh, northeast. All right, back to Pittsburgh. Um, I'm trying to get to um, the Cleveland. Oh, we got the Buffalo radar here. So we do have some strong storms moving into uh, northwest Pennsylvania and western New York. So let's see if it's able to give me the Cleveland radar. Which one is this? Okay, now we're in Gaylord, Michigan. Nothing there. Oh, boy. Here's the Detroit. I want to get the Cleveland radar. I'm trying to see which one of these arrows will take me there. Hey, yippee. Found, finally found it. Okay, so here's the view from the uh, Cleveland radar this evening. And we do see uh, some. there were some stronger storms up closer to the lake shore, but those have now moved southeastward. And we do have a couple of severe thunderstorm mornings uh, that are uh, uh, being put up. By the way, when this front reaches the East Coast tomorrow. I don't know how much activity is going to be with it. Uh, there may not be as much as you might think. But to take a look at the heat of the seas as of 6 o'clock. Again, another absolutely atrocious day when it comes to uh, the temperature and the humidity. Now, normally, I'm not a big fan of this, uh, you know, going for the sort of real feel and wind chill and that kind of thing. Uh, but the humidity and the dew points being up in the middle to upper 70s have been so off the wall that they've created these heat indices. Even though the temperatures themselves, I mean, it's hot enough. We're up, you know, we're up in the low and even some middle 90s. But, um, you know, it's not like we're talking about temperatures that were up around over 100. It's the, it's the humidity that has just been absolutely god-awful. And in the last 45 days, uh, it's been uh, especially unrelenting across uh, much of New Jersey, Long Island, uh, so southeastern New York State, across Connecticut. And, and even I was looking at some of the numbers in Boston, seeing an excessive amount, the highest, some of the highest numbers in terms of the number of hours that the dew points have been above 70 uh, this summer, the highest in some 50 years. So if, if it's, it, it's, it's not your perception, I mean, if it's your perception that uh, we are having a really exceptionally humid summer, um, your perception is right. Look at these heated seas in, in uh, eastern Massachusetts and on up through parts of Rhode Island. Uh, I mean, even through coastal Massachusetts, it's ridiculous uh, where it feels like it's between 100 and 105. I mean, this is just nuts for this for uh, 
for this area this time of year and going back even into parts of uh, interior Massachusetts and into through north central Connecticut with heat indices running uh, in the low 100 degree uh, range uh, I'm going to go a little further south uh, we'll take you down into southeastern Pennsylvania uh, uh, also here outrageous rel- uh, heat indices in the range of uh, 111 100 and 109 I mean just crazy numbers when you take into account all the dew points uh, down to Baltimore and Washington same idea so uh, the humidity has just been absolutely uh, off the wall we are going to see this tempered somewhat tomorrow because of some cloud cover Uh, that will at least help to hold the temperatures down by a few degrees even though the dew points are still going to be insane now here's the front by actually the front nears the coast tomorrow morning and just kind of gets hung up Uh, it really doesn't push through it waits for a wave to develop on that front and it really doesn't push through my neck of the woods uh, southeastern pennsylvania to southern new england until tomorrow night and then you've got the high that builds down from the north so we get this onshore flow the front never gets that far south it makes it down into the delmarva peninsula and just stalls and then you're going to get this onshore flow which will mean for some showers i don't see a whole lot of rain in terms of volume here um that uh at this point looks to be unlikely uh, because we don't really have any kind of deep trough in the atmosphere uh for these storms to uh, uh th- that it would be causing these storms Uh, you're just dealing with this frontal boundary Uh, the ridge in the east staying very very strong through all of this it's it's just flexing weakening and then strengthening again and then finally as we get into labor day we're back into a southerly flow here southwest flow which means very warm very humid very tropical conditions coming right back look at the dew points here and again we're only out to 126 hours but just go look at the dew points by the time we get back to monday they're just atrocious again so here's uh here's the the situation at least going into with this front all the dry air is in upstate new york and into uh interior new england where you see some dew points by friday morning in the 50s and 40s dew points get down to about 60 to about new york city and it's a temporary shot uh if uh you may blink and miss it uh then the dew points kind of go back to the mid and upper 60s which is uncomfortable enough but at least the temperatures Friday and Saturday won't be much out of the 70s for uh, a large part of this area. Sunday, it's back up into the 80s. The dew points back up into the 70s again. Same for Monday. Uh, and then uh, probably for two, look at the, the dew points shooting up into the 70s all the way up into northern Minnesota and into the northern Great Lakes uh, by the time we get to um, next Monday night. And we still don't have... I wonder if he's kind of getting a bit of a delay here because we still don't have uh, an updated view of the new GFS beyond 126 hours. We should have had a little bit more of it by now. So let me go back uh, as we uh, take a look at what happens next week. Uh, It looks like a very warm, humid week until a more important front tries to come through late in the week. And I have to tell you, see, this is the big problem. Uh, Yesterday... Uh, and the day before where the GFS was trying to show a more important high and a more important front coming down the ridge on this on, on the last series of model runs uh, has been much stronger and that keeps it very warm and humid uh, right through the first 10 days of the month other than whatever kind of onshore flow we get uh, there's no real push here on the old run uh, because the ridge in the east stays fairly strong it doesn't really pop up Uh, all the way into southeastern Canada but it's kind of firm there east-west and just keeping the edge of the westerlies uh, just along and just north of New York City and in fact uh, here it is on on uh, on the wider view Uh, you got these active westerlies going on now that at least causes the ridge to flatten a bit but it's still there going through the weekend and into next week and here is where it flexes you can also see what happens with the tropical system here is it it responds to that weakness and turns northward the ridge in the east just holds uh right through uh the the through the 16 day period now I, i'm gonna uh, you know i, I want to be cautious here because um perhaps the models you know every run seems to be keying on something else so i i don't know um 
whether uh, you know beyond the uh, seven to ten day period how reliable this is going to be but certainly uh, into early next week with the GFS anyway and also with the European uh, to a large degree you know there's your ridge in the east on the European which kind of keeps it there it does weaken it a bit uh, brings those westerlies down uh, to about 40 degrees north toward the end of the period so it, it tries to bring some kind of a backdoor uh, push but uh, it's going to be fighting that that uh, that ridge until we can you know basically stab it in the heart and get it completely out of the way it's going to continue to be a player here through the first part of the month of September so if you were looking for some kind of break here uh, in in the uh, a long term break it looks like we're going to have some more days of dew points up into the 70s and one of the big problems with this by the way is the fact that you are um, uh, the dew points are so high because the prevalent the uh, wind direction has been you know off the ocean and that's that's just it just feeds in the tropical moisture you've got ocean water temperatures that are sitting around the 80 degree mark uh, this is the warmest time of year for the ocean so we, we've got essentially a, a Florida feel to things here uh, in the Northeast I personally want it to go away uh, I don't think anybody wants it to go away more than I do I want it to go away and get rid of this humidity uh, but um, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't seem to want to do that so we'll just uh, we're just gonna have to continue to be very patient with this uh, until uh, we get some a decisive break uh, in in the pattern okay let's uh, let me come back to the boards with you um, let's uh, the the um, William Huber yes it is hot enough for me yes it is I swear <laughs> um, I'm, I'm rolling back here there's a lot of folks on tonight and it's always good to see everybody on board uh, smoke and shoot pa shooter packs uh, will keep you updated uh, we'll see what the models do with that the lead wave uh, that makes it into uh, the Bahamas and into the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico uh, late in the weekend early next week uh, they seem to be backing off on development. The European still has something, as I showed you. But right now, uh, you know, it doesn't look like there's anything here that, that suggests that we're going to spin up something major. And the dust from the desert, um, no, the dust wouldn't intensify the storm. It would do the exact opposite. It would, would impede development uh, with regards to the uh, uh, Saharan dust. Um, let's see. Uh, overnight low in Central Park was 81 uh, the highest Scott Briller that I mean I can remember that I'll have to go back and look this to see officially I can remember a couple of nights where the overnight lows were 84 and I'm trying to remember in one of the last times maybe when we had a hundred degree stretch a stretch of hundred degree highs that maybe the low was 86 uh, but I'm, I'm gonna have to I'm get I'm, I'm going from memory here so I, I, I may not you know, I may not have it exactly right, but 84, I certainly remember happening a couple of times. Um, and 86, for some reason, pops into my head, but uh, we'll du double check. The record for the highest low temperature at, in Central Park was 78. For the day, it may have been. Uh, but the day record, I think the all-time record is either 84 or 86. And I think one of those 84s actually uh, uh, occurred back uh, in the 19, uh, 1930s. And I often find record low high minimums are, I, I don't really pay too much attention to those because they're awfully, you know, you kind of understand what they are, but you know, it, 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 I was talking with one of my colleagues today. It, it, it takes you, you eat up about 30 seconds of television time trying to explain uh, what it means. So I've been, I've been kind of uh, avoiding it. Um, Bach 505, highest low, uh, somewhere in the mid 80s. Yeah, it's either 84 or 86. Um, let's see. Um, Craig mentioned 85 to 90 again Monday. Uh, not impossible. Look, 85 to 90 wouldn't be that extraordinary. 90 to 95, I've had enough of. So I hope if it's going to happen, you know, we'll have to deal with mid to upper 80s. It might depend on cloud cover, but hopefully it'll be capped there. I, I don't want to see it go back up into the mid 90s with dew points in the 70s again. The air just doesn't move. Uh, and it's really just disgusting out when it's when it's like this. Uh, can a hurricane that forms in November ever turn into a storm, snowstorm, or is that impossible? There have been instances, Johnny Quest, of of uh, of late season hurricanes up the East Coast, 
uh, producing snows in some places inland. Uh, there, it's happened a couple of times in Maine. And actually in Sandy, with the upper low that was out there with Hurricane Sandy, as it made the transition into a post-tropical storm, there were some heavy snows that occurred in the mountains of West Virginia, uh, believe it or not. I, I had forgotten about that until uh, somebody mentioned it on the anniversary of it last year. And then I was reminded, yes, indeed, uh, it can happen, but it won't do it as a tropical system. It will do it as it transitions over, it makes a complete transition over into a post-tropical or extra-tropical system uh, where it becomes cold core. And in, in, uh, in certain areas, given the time of year, you probably would look, look at elevated areas uh, for something like that uh, to happen. But yeah, it has indeed happened. Um, okay, Lourdes, Nava, Sierra, there's nothing to worry about in Florida right now other than just downpours and thunderstorms. We're not, you know, we're, we, uh, you know we, we mentioned what the models were doing and trying to, to uh, um, flare up a, sister, a, a, a tropical wave over the weekend or into early next week. But uh, the models aren't really overly bullish with the idea and some of them have backed off so you know right now there really isn't too much to worry about other than the fact that you're going to have uh, some um, uh, some enhanced uh, downpour and thunderstorm activity uh, right through uh, the weekend uh, is the high humidity a new feature for the climate which could become more frequent with the warmer atmosphere containing more water vapor I don't think it is I was looking at some of the numbers around uh, this seems to be a product of uh, areas from uh, that I, I did a cursory view here, but as far as the dew points in the 70s are concerned, it didn't seem like the numbers were too unusual. Once you go south of uh, central New Jersey on southward, they did seem to be higher going up into southern New England. Uh, but you have to kind of look at all the numbers, and you can't really look at one. there have been these spikes when you look at the charts. There have been these spikes every five or six years where the dew points. You know, you get, you, you get uh, you know, a, 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 a rather humid summer, uh, only to be followed by a couple of summers where the humidity is not really all that oppressive. This one seems to be exceptional. The data I looked at only goes back to 19, 1971. Uh, so I bet if I could get my hands on some data that goes back further, uh, we probably would find um, other summers that were matching this. Uh, I also the data set. I noticed that areas that have you know um, the 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 larger data sets uh, seem to have it where um, the numbers are a bit more even. That the spike the spike from this year doesn't look uh, overly unusual. There are a couple of numbers that I look, a couple of stations I looked at where the data sets were pretty small, only going back to about fifteen or twenty years. I'm only looking at data sets. You know the uh, data sets that only that went back almost 50 years, and that's still not far enough uh, uh, to go back on. Um, so uh, I'm going to answer your question right now. You know by saying no, I don't think I don't think that that is the case. Uh, you can't really look at uh, one of one uh, series of events in one given year. You know a weather pattern in one year, and you know tie it to climate change. You know, if, if we wind up seeing this uh, 5, 10, 15 years in a row where we start to see a definite increase in the numbers of, of, day, of, of hours where the dew point is above 70, then we can come back and revisit the question. But un until then, my answer to that uh, would be no. And Brandon Kasner, you're not the only one that hates this heat, believe me. It's that, and the, the heat and the humidity combined have, um, ha have been just awful. And yes, Green Fire 919, as we said, Sandy... Uh, the uh, the uh, the post tropical low that Sandy became the extra tropical storm that Sandy became did produce some heavy snows uh, in the mountains of West Virginia and yes Jason Schaefer uh, New York City a week after Sandy and Long Island uh, did get snows that actually closed schools from the uh, upper low uh, you know set a um, uh, created if I remember correctly uh, the upper low that represented uh, the post-tropical system aloft from Sandy as it pulled out uh, we saw a, a, an arm of, of uh, a shortwave trough rotate around it and a little mini upper low formed and from that you had a very very cold pool of air aloft and it was it was enough uh, to uh, create some heavy wet snows. I places in my house if I remember correctly I got about th two or three slushy inches 
and where my kids went to school in, in western Suffolk, uh, easternmost Nassau County, there was eight to nine, eight, eight to ten inches of heavy wet snow that wound up closing the schools in those areas for an extra week because they, uh, they, they, every, all the, 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 the uh, electric companies, plows and everything else, they were too busy with, with sandy storm repair. Uh, there was nobody around to, uh, to move the heavy wet snow. Uh, so that created an additional problem, believe it or not. Uh, so, uh, yes, it can happen from time to time. All right, folks, as we uh, contemplate ways of staying cool and getting away from these heat indices over 100, going to uh, call it a, uh, uh, an end to this, this live stream at this point. Thank you very much for being here. Really, really appreciate it. We had a nice crowd tonight. I know when the tropical systems get involved, it, it starts to get a bit busier. And, uh, you know, we'll, of course, stay on top of things to see what happens uh, as we go through the weekend and into uh, through the Labor Day weekend and into um, into next week. Uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show tonight, roughly about 9.15, plus or minus five minutes on either side. And we're going to try to have meteorologist uh, Bill Goodman, my buddy uh, Bill Goodman, uh, who works at the uh, Weather Service in Upton, New York. And we can talk about this wicked humidity and uh, also uh, talk about the tropics. And that's on the on my Facebook page, the Joe and Joe Weather Show tonight, at a, roughly at about 9.15. And you can access that by going to uh, meteorologist Joe Chaffee on Facebook. Check out my website post too on all this humidity and uh, and, and the tropics, and you can uh, find that at uh, meteorologistjoechaffee.com. And I think that's it. Other than to say that uh, we are a participant in the Amazon uh, Services LLC program, which is an affiliate pro advertising program designed to provide a means for this channel to earn fees by linking to Amazon.com and its affiliated sites. And the same goes for Ebates. Uh, in fact, if you use Ebates, you can get cash back on your Amazon purchases. So it uh, works both ways. And thank you very much for those of you who have uh, used those links. Don't forget, uh, if you're looking at the radar and you're watching this uh, later on on a replay, the radars are dated. So you want to check your local National Weather Service uh, office page. And you can access that at weather.gov to see the latest radars, watches, and warnings. And also uh, consult your local National Weather Service office or the National Hurricane Center regarding decision, decisions you may have to make when it comes to uh, any threats from tropical storms or hurricanes. Weather model maps that are shown here are not to be used for making any kind of decisions. Have a great evening, everybody. We will uh, see you either later or tomorrow.